Cowboys don't ride Frisians, but I'm gonna give you six reasons why I bought one. Antonio Banderas rode a Frisian in the Mask of Zorro, and he got to make out with Catherine Zeta-Jones. You really don't need another reason than that to think about getting one. This video can end now. Catherine Zeta-Jones is literally the best thing to ever come across the screen. So if Frisians give you that level of game, sign me up. Now I know old Zorro, played by Anthony Hopkins, says, Black Andalusia, magnificent. Looks like your old horse, Tornado. But Tornado's actually a Frisian. Te voy a conceder el gran honor de ser mi caballo. <laughs> I love cow horses. I've owned a pile of them and I still have several. They are the CrossFit athletes of horses. They're good at pretty much everything. They know how to work a cow. They have great minds, but sometimes they struggle in big country. And I live in Utah where the valley floor is 4,600 feet. And surrounding mountains and hills where we gather cows are between seven and 9,000 feet. In one long day of gathering cows, you could rack up 30,000 feet of elevation gain, which means you basically climb Mount Everest, and sometimes my 14.3, 1,100 pound cow horses run out of gas. Right now, the cow horse game is a bit of a rat race, or should I say cat race? Because a lot of people are trying to breed highbrow cats, smooth as a cats, and metallic cats, and cross them on Shining Spark, Dual Ray, Playgun, or Pepto Boone small mares, all with pretty similar bloodlines. And full disclosure, those are awesome. I've had several sons and daughters as smooth as a cat, and most recently a son of Red Hot Metal. They have great minds. They're some of the most talented horses I've ever ridden, but not everybody wants a cow horse. Some people just want a good horse to take on the trails or gather off the mountains without running out of gas. And I think it's good to diversify a breeding program, which is what I'm trying to build. Which brings me to point number four, risk mitigation. Because there is a relatively low supply of quality Frisians in the Western states, and demand has been steadily increasing over the last several years, their prices in theory should fluctuate less during an economic recession than quarter horses as a whole, because quarter horse supply, while still in heavy demand, is really high. And if jobs data in the first quarter of next year takes a hit like many banks are forecasting, quarter horse prices are more likely to see a drop as a whole than specialized breeds like Frisians. My theory is that while these Frisians are too pampered, they appear to have the confirmation and build to endure long working days required by cowboys in the high mountain ranges of the Rockies. They have great bone, large feet, good muscle structure. So over the next several years, we will train this filly to work cows, rope, and we're gonna put a lot of miles on to determine whether or not these are worth adding to a ranch or half draft program. The filly I bought, Sire, is Hessel 480, and her dam is a daughter of Talbert 400. I've tried to get the best bred Frisian available in my area and haven't seen anything as good as this filly we picked up. The lady I bought her from really knew her stuff. Horses come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and personality types. A good trainer can work within a specific breed with specific personality types, but the best trainers can work with any and all. So if you don't continue to push yourself and test your abilities as a trainer, you will stay the same or get worse. And I've been working within a very specific niche of quarter horses for a long time, and I wanna try something new. We will be closely documenting this filly's training over the next few years, so stay tuned for updates. Good horses aren't made overnight, but we'll document as much progress as we can on this filly. Guys, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you like the style of this video, please subscribe as it helps us continue funding these projects. Happy riding, Nadios.